All right, so we covered a lot of stuff today. Uh, very strategic view. Uh, I really enjoy this type of conversation in these briefings. I don't, I don't, I've sat through tons of these briefings, and every time I, I listen to them, the speakers teach me something. I learn something new. I learn another way to deliver a message uh, to try to connect to our airmen and help them understand where we're at. So I'm just going to hit a couple topics, and then I'll pass it over to the other two mentors, and they'll kind of do some wrap-ups of some other stuff today. You know, being the USAFEF Africa guy, you know, i got to talk about Russia. You know, it's China, China, China. Secretary uh, said at AFA he had three priorities. It was China, China, and China. And uh, I think a bunch of us airmen from USAF are always like, hey, what about Russia? And, you know, what's going on in Ukraine right now? Uh, what's the, if there's conflict going to happen, if Russia's going to invade Ukraine, what's the first thing we're going to see? Does anyone know? Cyber attacks. What's been happening all day in Ukraine? Denial of service, cyber attacks. So next will be the false flag, and then oh, that'll be their precursor for an invasion, and then we'll have an invasion after that. So, you know, Russia's near term, that's now, that's this week, is, you know, them invading Ukraine. That doesn't mean we're going to be drawn into a war with Russia. That's not what we want, right? Uh, and like this, the chief of staff said, you know, you're going to dance with the one you brought. You know, we already have, if we go to war with Russia right now, we're fighting with what we have. You know, we're not going to go get wedge tails and buy in GAD and B-21s. We're going to war with what we have right now. So that ship sailed. We're talking about the pacing threat, which is China. And then making sure if we have whatever we need to take care of China in 2030, or you pick the year, then we'll have enough. We'll be good to take care of Russia. Because China is the pacing threat. So just some perspective on uh, from, from UCOM, from USAFE, you know, and we'll see how it plays out this week. And you know, President already said, we're not sending US forces in Russia, into the Ukraine. Definitely want to send them to Russia. We don't, we're not seeing U.S. forces in Ukraine. Doing so would be world war. So we're moving forces out there to bolster NATO uh, to make sure that, that whatever happens stays in Ukraine. So just some essay on that. If we talk about ACE, you know, I think uh, USAF was ready to declare IOC on ACE uh, at the end of last year in December. Uh, PACAF, same way, but we didn't do it because of messaging. Right? We were, we were worried about uh, being escalatory with Russia particularly. And so although I feel that we're IOC and ACE, and I'm sure uh, Dave Wolf from PACAF will give, say the same thing. Yeah, he gives me a thumbs up, you know, so we, we feel the same way. And we we're gonna do a joint message between USAFE and PACAF talking about, hey, we're IOC and ACE and all this other stuff. But again, we, again, we have to, a lot of this stuff, like you believe it or not, decisions like that go all the way to the White House. Or not necessarily the White House, but at least to National Security Council, and they're worried about messaging, right? So. I think we're, we're doing good on ACE. You know, uh, I think we're, we're on a good trajectory with that. And uh, part of that's the MCA piece. And I'd say MCA is not for everybody. You know, there's some airmen, I think we just need them to do their job. You know, uh, we have airmen that just struggle just to do their regular J-O-B, right? I don't need you to learn how to do other people's job. I just need you to do your job, <laughs> right? And there's other airmen that are like pipe hitters. I'm like, hey, you know, I think you can take a little bit more. So I just say MCA is not for everybody. Right? And I think a lot of times we try to talk about, oh, well, I'm multi cable I'm doing some, hey, some people I just, again, I need you to do your job, right? And the, the last thing I'd say, push the button, right? And push that the trust button. We talked about trust a lot today, uh, but I ask you to think about, you know, when these tough decisions are made by our senior leaders in the Air Force, a lot of times they have, you know, a lot more information. They're getting briefings and things that we're not seeing, and, uh, and they're making hard decisions, right? Decisions I'm glad I don't have to make. And luckily, I don't get paid to make those decisions, right? Because like my, my paycheck's small and theirs is big, you know? So I'd say uh, we have to really trust our leadership. You know, when General Brown, Secretary of the Air Force, these people are making these big decisions for our force in 2030, 2035, where we're going to go, you know, I'd ask when people like, you know, because we see it from our foxhole, like, oh, I can't believe we're ready 10, you know, whatever, whatever platform's going to do this job. And, you know, you know, that's very tactical look, right? single roll aircraft, you know, and just think about money, and we don't have so much money, right? We don't have so much peanut butter to spread, you know, and so we have to figure out where we're going to do that. So they're making hard decisions, right? So I'd ask when they make a decision that maybe is not, um, is not very popular or a decision you don't like, just push that trust button. Trust in our leadership. Trust they're making the decisions that's best for the Air Force. Not your base, not your tribe, not your favorite platform. They're making decisions that's best for the Air Force. And our, and our sons and daughters that maybe one day will serve. All right, that's all I got, and I'll pass it over to BK. Thank you. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me?
Okay. All right, uh, real quick, I think uh, Chief Hayden kind of really did a good job of talking about today and what you need to be thinking about going forward. Before I came here on Monday, I went to Pope Air, I mean, Army Airfield to see the Earth Gate go out. So Mobility Warriors were getting the 82nd Airborne out there to Poland, but I mean, we know why they're headed out there. You got to keep in mind that any old plan we have, about majority of the assets are going to come from CONUS. So that means we're going to fight to get to the fight. And that's going to require us all. So that's just something to think about. I'm not going to really give you anything new, but just to kind of maybe think through some of the, the um, information that was pushed to you as expectations from different levels. The chief of staff of the Air Force, he had an uh, expert expectation that you be experts, candid, uh, get after the, the right answers, and care for airmen. That's pretty easy stuff. He said he's talked to a lot of airmen, and he wants you to know their expectation is that you need to know them, care for them, and support them. That's easy stuff. The Chief Mess Sergeant in the Air Force laid a couple nuggets on you. She like, talk about your balance, your pillars. Be able to shift those emotional gears. Uh, go to money meetings. Don't avoid them. Mentor all, but sponsor few. We talked a little bit about strategic competition, that uh, paradoxical trinity of policy, people, and chance, but that's kind of military. Strategy ends ways means, and really know your purpose. The Chiefs group, read the handbook. All right, A5 Futures, um, big picture there is, you know, for you, be that change agent and really instill that competitive mindset and get off TikTok. For uh, half A3, really discuss the really at 4 gen model for the most part and then really ACE and, um, and how to facilitate ACEs through multi-capable airmen, as Chief Hedden kind of talked about. We're going to have multi-capable airmen and we'll just have capable airmen and that's going to be okay. Uh, A8. Uh, Chief Ross hates libraries, so you can put that on social media. Um, big picture, though, is we're going to fund stuff that scares China and deters Russia. And really, the end of his message was take care of yourself, take care of others, and accept help. And I think that was a pretty good message. And then we just had the Undersecretary really talk about the seven operational um, imperatives of our SEC AF. They weren't in priority, but I think number seven, we all can kind of see ourselves in, right? And that's making that transition from where we are today to fighting wars. And that's something that we really have to think about. The last thing I, I would just end with is, hey, you guys are going to work in the Delta. Your organization is trying to go somewhere, wherever you work at. And that's kind of based off of where DOD is going and then the Air Force and every echelon down. Figure out what that Delta is. For your level, is it training? Is it organizational structures, communication issues? If that's what it is, get after it. And then from a higher level, maybe working after policy and guidance. And then, you know, you're going to work with a boss who you may not align with. you got to find alignment. As long as what they're doing is not illegal or moral, and it's just not the way you would do it, fight hard to just find that alignment. And then that's where you're going to go forward. If there's really a um, difference of opinion, bottom line, they know the opinion, you own the difference, you got to figure it out. And that's where you're going to move forward as a command team. That's all I got. I love you. That's all I figured. I won't, we're going to have a drink tonight, but I'm going to pass it to my big man. Hey, hey, he did an amazing job and kind of touched on a little bit of the, of the things I wanted to kind of close out with today. Hey, just an analogy as we talked about the force, uh, Jen and, and the CSAF talked about the four bins. I just wanted to say, hey, this is an investment this week into you Right, and there's a return that we expect from you. Uh, so as you look at the force gen uh, generation and we look at the, the uh, bins, right, and you return to your AOR, right, and your center of influence where you'll lead, I just ask you to think of, of four general areas of concentration. Number one is how do you onboard your folks onto your inner onto your organization, that needs to be a priority for you to focus on because we talked about the things about first impressions and we talked about building trust. It starts right there, right? What is your first impression to that new airman that arrives on your installation, right? That second bin, I will tell you, is in garrison. What is your development plan of execution for your folks underneath your AOR, right? When we look at, at OT&E and enlisted force development action plans and pacing challenge and operational imperatives for China and Russia and money and foundational documents, you need to have a plan on how your folks are going to stay in tune and in step with the enlisted uh, uh, a force in the direction that SimSAF wants to take us in. Uh, the third bin I will tell you is about your deployments. 
We talked about what it means to be deployed, ACE and MCA. And, and the other piece, I like what, what uh, Ross talked about was, hey, that reintegration piece when we return from deployment. How are we connecting with our folks when they go down range and when they come back? And then family matters. How are we connected to that family? I'll tell you, when I was a command chief back at Scott Air Force Base, I used to tell my teammates and say, hey, when, when someone arrives on this installation, they're on the installation for about probably 10 months, maybe to, to a year, and then they get a, a, an assignment to deploy, right? They got to deploy, right? That's when we reach out to the family and try to make connective tissues. We're already behind the curve. It's already too late. That family has been on the base for almost a year, and now we're finally trying to reach out to them and trying to partner with them and say, hey, you know what? While your family member's downrange, we're going to take care of you when we haven't created that relationship with them from the very beginning. So make that a focus. Uh, the other piece is how do you offboard? How do you offboard? What I found my failure that I did as a supervisor and a leader, I had a lot of outstanding airmen that worked for me. And when they PCS, you know what we did? We did the recognition, we did the party, and then we sent them on their way. Never did I reach out to the gaining unit and say, hey, let me talk to you about the superstar you got coming to your organization. Let me tell you about some of the qualities that they have, and let me tell you about some things we talked about further developing them. So guess what? My, my last exec, when she left and she went to the Pentagon, I reached out to that leadership team, and we had those discussions. I sent that feedback. I sent her last EPR, and I got with that leadership team, and we talked about the further development of that airman. And I'm saying, hey, I'm handing you an outstanding airman. My expectation is that you continue to make, help, help them grow and mature in the United States Air Force. Uh, the second thing I want to talk to you about, and again, staying in that Fort Bend area, hey, when I first became a command chief, I came to a conference kind of similar like this. It was for all command chiefs, and they talked about time management. And I had a lot of briefings on time management, but it was never uh, presented in this way of being deliberate. How do you deliberately deal with time management? And it talked about 21057. And a lot of you might have heard this already, but I'm going to walk through it and I'm going to talk to you about it as it relates to the four bin, right? They talked about being prepared. In, in a 24-hour day, how do you be deliberate about what you do in that day? The two hours is about you taking care of yourself. I don't care if it's reading, meditating, exercising, praying, having a coffee, watching the news, whatever you do. How do you get yourself mentally, physically, and emotionally ready to take on the day's deeds, right? That's that two-hour piece. The 10 is about the work. Now that I'm ready and I've got myself emotionally, physically, and emotionally ready, I got to go and put in the hours, right? And I'll be honest. For me, when I look and did my assessment for myself, I said, you know what? I'm, I'm probably around the 12, 12 to 14-hour, right, work day. And, and we will be, and you will be when you get into your seat, right? But it's focus and being deliberate about what you're doing with your time. The third piece, like the five hours, was about that family time. Being committed to your family. And I like the way he, in, in that one bin he had, um, it was about, uh, let me find it on my chart here. It's about uh, being, uh, it's, oh man, I can't even read my own right now. Okay, so it's about being ready to commit, being ready to commit, right? Being ready to commit. When I leave the office, right, at any moment I could be called back. That's why you wear the uniform is 24-7. But when I'm home, I'm with my wife, and, and I'm giving that time to her. I dedicate that time to her, right? That 210, that five piece, how are you going to commit to your family, knowing that you are still on call at any moment's notice? but you can still commit to your loved one that's with you, right? And then the last piece, right, that reset piece, right, is laying your butt down and getting some proper rest, right? The fool in me used to walk around and be proud to say, hey, you know what, I get four hours of sleep and I'm back up and I'm ready to get after it again, right? Now, you know, a little bit aged, I realize that I need about, probably about seven, eight hours of sleep. So I focus on that on getting that seven to eight hours of sleep so that I can start that next day all over again with that two hours of being focused on myself and getting my exercise 
and stuff in. Hey, last thing I will tell you this, right, came up as an electrician, and this is important to your folks that you'll be leading. Hey, um, when we wanted to connect a power source to the end user, we used a conduit. And the conduit enabled us to safely get that power from one, one uh, uh, source to the end user so they could use it and make it relevant, right? I tell you, be a conduit for your airmen that you're charged to lead. You have the responsibility to get that information translated from the source to the end user, that young airman that just arrived on your installation and needs to be brought in to the team to understand where the organization is going and then number one, how important they are to the organization, right? So be a conduit for your folks. And that is all I got. We're gonna have some fun tonight. Um, are we gonna make announcements about this evening? All right, thank you, appreciate it, congratulations. Hey, I know I'm the only thing standing between you and the social hour, so we'll make this pretty quick. Uh, so you do have the social. You have two options to get there. Uh, there will be buses that pull up in front of lodging, and that's where the reception is, and they'll take you over to the club. Um, the club is a pretty short distance from here, so I'm pretty sure everybody, anybody not have a smartphone with a map app? Okay, if you type in the Maxwell Club, not Maxwell Club, you type in the Maxwell Club, to your app, it'll show you how to walk there. It's a 10 minute walk from the SOS dorms. Pretty easy to get there. You just basically go to Air Command and Staff College, walk across the uh, chapel parking lot, and you'll see the club right there. Any questions on where that is? All right, another thing about the social, please go. Uh, one of the things that we teach at the Chief Leadership Academy is leveraging networks and relationships to take care of airmen and to get the mission done. So you have a great opportunity tonight with 389 of your fellow newest Chief Master Sergeants of the Air Force 